Hello, um, let's discuss about processes and operating system tray. What is process? Process is basically a program along with all of its context in which it is going to run. So this program and its context both together constitutes what is called as a process. So before going to the technical details of what process is and how operating system handles it, let's take one example that we encounter in every day. Like I, ha I want to do different tasks now at the uh, same time since I'm a single person I can't do them at the same time I can't start all of them at the same time but uh, so the worst case that I can do is I can take up one task finish it completely and then take the second one so I do the task sequentially but the problem that you might see in this is I might really take a long time to finish the task so I can't do really better like uh, right so suppose in I have tasks such as I want to write my project report which is of highest priority to me and then I want to cook food which I'll do in a micro with help of microwave and so the my involvement involved in this task is very less because I have to put food in the microwave and start the timer and I want to wash clothes so I have to put the clothes in the washing machine and put the washing powder and the fabric softener and start it. So these are the three main tasks which I want to do now and maybe I also want to listen to music but that's not my main priority I can keep it aside for some time and once I'm done with the other task I can take up that task so uh, it's not actually these are not uh, listening to music is not actually a task but uh, I'm considering it as task to make the example more realistic and more comparable to the to our actual discussion of processes and operating system okay so what I'll do, uh, I'll arrange these things according to some priority. We'll not go into that because that is part of scheduling algorithm which we'll deal with in a different companion video. So I'll put my clothes in the washing machine, put the washing powder and the fabric softener and start the washing machine. And there is no additional involvement from my side in this task. So washing clothes is the basic task but putting the fabric softener and the washing powder and starting the washing machine all these things constitute the context in which the washing machine task is run so but once that the washing process is started I can leave that task and I can start with my cooking stuff I can take out the food from the fridge and put it in the oven and start the timer again this constitutes the food task along with its context so once that is started I can start writing my report so in a way all the three tasks are running at the same time even though my involvement was sequential but the tasks are running at the same time so I handled these three processes or the task in such a way that my involvement was distributed in a proper way such that the total completion time of all the tasks together is less so I handled these three tasks in a more intelligent way rather than going sequentially finishing my cooking stuff and then finishing my washing stuff and then writing report so it is somewhat similar um, the concept of process in operating system is somewhat similar even in processes in operating system we have a program which is actual task like washing clothes and there is a context associated with it that context may be the data on which it is going to work on the state in which the processor is in on which we are going to run it and the state in which the actual process is because there can be multiple processes and there is only one CPU there is only one task which is running only one process which is running so it, it these all these things constitute the context so how do how does operating system handle it on a broad level operating system considers it using a five state model so what is a five state model as you can see on your screen there are five states in which a process can be so of course it is the new process, new state whenever a task is created like whenever a parent process creates a child process or whenever a user starts an application a task is created but it is not in a ready state it is not at ready because there can be hundreds of such tasks which are which you want to run but uh, you can't consider all of them for scheduling like the task of listening to music in my case was not of high priority so I kept it aside so but it that is also a new task which I created at the beginning that I had four tasks but I considered only three so in this also in this case also I have many new tasks but I'll not consider all of them for scheduling now so I'll keep some of them in the secondary memory so those are new tasks so whenever 
I am ready to execute a task, I bring them into main memory and I put them in the ready state. Like for example, I had three tasks of cooking, washing and writing report in my example. So those are in ready state now and my scheduling algorithm chooses one out of the ready state, one task out of the ready state based on the constraints given to the scheduling algorithm and assign CPU to it and then that task comes in the running state. So if there is only one CPU, only one task can be in running state at any time. So once it is in running state, it can either finish its execution and get goes to terminated state like once the washing is done and I've taken out the clothes, it is done and it is in the terminated state now and we might uh, take out take away the memory that has been allocated on the resources allocated to that process and give it to some other process but before termination if it is waiting for some IO task like once I put the food in the microwave one and started the timer so I, I my involvement was not there so if I consider myself as a CPU then my involvement was not there but still the task was running so I was waiting for the timer or interrupt so that is like an IO, IO, IO task so if such cases going to happen then I put that particular task on the waiting state and assign uh, another uh, and take out another ready task and assign CPU to it like the way I put my foot in the microwave and after starting the timer I started writing report so if I consider myself CPU I put that microwave one task on waiting state and took the writing report task and made it as the running task and started working on it so and once the IO task is completed it goes to the ready state so once the timer of the oven gets over so it, it is again ready for my attention so that I can take the food out so it goes to the ready state now so there could be one more case like a task is running for a very long time and uh, you want to preempt it so that you can take up some other task so that you have you give fair fair amount of uh, consideration for all the tasks. Suppose I have two tasks which both are of uh, high execution, both expect high execution time. So then I can split my execution times like I give some uh, 30 millisecond for every task. So after every 30 millisecond I preempt a task and take the next one and so on and so forth. I continue executing both the tasks so that both get equal share of CPU over a given time of time, given frame of time. So in this case we go for that preemption uh, uh, transitions as, as you can see on the screen like the task goes from running to ready state back after this preemption and when it gets dispatched again it comes from ready to running state. So this is basically the five state model that we use. There are two more states which we add actually uh, if there are more tasks. So we extend this five state model to seven state model which is not so uh, famous as the five state model but for the sake of completion I'll just add it. As you can see on the screen there are two more states like uh, blocks suspend and ready suspend. So as you can see these are just connected to the ready uh, ready suspend is connected to the ready state and block suspend is connected to the block state. So this is done when there is swapping. As I took the example of uh, listening to music in uh, earlier like it was a very uh, low priority example so and I said that once I'm done with all the three tasks I take up that job suppose I finish my all three tasks of washing writing report and cooking food I take up that uh, listening to music task and I start to listen and I start listening music but then I get some other task like uh, I get a phone call then to put this task on hold I put this task on waiting state and I start talking over phone and suddenly I get many more such tasks and again this listening to music becomes of least priority then I shift it to uh, secondary memory like then I make it as a low priority task in my example so in the similar way in operating system if such a case arrives and a low priority task is shifted to secondary memory there could be some other reasons why which because of which it is shifted to secondary memory for the sake of uh, ease of understanding i'm just taking this uh, context of being it being a very low priority task so in that case if it was already blocked and i swap it then it goes from block to block suspended and if it is ready and i swap it then it goes from ready to ready suspended and of course if it is block suspended and then the io operation is done then it moves from block suspended to ready suspended 
there is also a rare possibility of moving a running task directly into ready suspended rather than moving it to ready and then to ready suspended so this is basically just an extension of five state model which we have seen earlier so as of now this is how operating uh, system creates a uh, process and what are the different states in which a process runs so in the next video we'll see how operating system actually handles it because then we need the concept of uh, uh, process control blocks so that uh, that that acts as data structure which operating system maintains to handle different operating systems and different mechanisms by which processes are handled by operating systems that we'll see in the next companion video but this video acts as basis for the next video uh, if you have any uh, questions please write them down in the comment section and if you want to check our different videos then you can subscribe to our channel